She was a street worker, a prostitute, conducting her business on the streets of Florida, in the United States. But her hatred for human life eventually gets the better of her, and she finds herself taking the lives of her clients, robbing them in the process. The courts finds her guilty of multiple murders, and after 12 years on death row, on the 9th of October, 2002, she was executed for her crimes. Join me, as we explore the life and crimes of Aileen Carol Warnos. Welcome, to Simply Told. Okay, I cannot go in the execution chamber and die in the execution chamber as a liar. And I cannot go in the execution chamber and be executed under the devil. I have to come clean and clean, cleanse my spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, so I have to come clean and tell the world the lies that went on through my mouth. I mean, the, now prosecutors and well, the cops. And that, you, and that you killed seven men. Huh? That you killed those men in cold blood. <laughs> yeah, and I got to come clean that I killed those seven men in first degree murder and robbery. As they said, they had it right. A serial killer. Who was Aileen Warnos? Aileen's birth name was actually Aileen Carol Pittman. She was born in Rochester, Michigan, on the 29th of February, 1956, to mother Diane Warnos and dad, Leo Dale Pittman. Her mom and dad married at a young age. Her dad, Leo, was around 18, and her mom, Diane, was around 14. Aileen had a sibling, an older brother, named Keith. But after only two years of marriage, Diane files for a divorce, while she was pregnant with Aileen. Aileen never got to meet her dad. He was already sitting in jail and was eventually sentenced to serve life in prison for kidnapping, and for the rape of a seven-year-old girl. He was later found hanging in his cell on 30 January 1969. Anyway, going back to Eileen's childhood, she, with her older brother, Keith, was left in the care of her grandparents at the tender age of four, who, unfortunately, were both suffering from alcohol addiction. The grandparents, Lori, and Britta legally adopts the two siblings, Keith and Aileen, on the 18th of March 1960. The environment was not ideal. At a young age, things went wrong for her. By the age of 11, she was already turning tricks for whatever she needed, which would include drugs and even food. According to Aileen, she was molested, and regularly beaten by her grandfather, indicating that she would have to strip naked before the beating would start. It was only a matter of time, before she would inevitably fall pregnant. On the 23rd of March 1971, when she was only 15 years old, Aileen births a son. But soon after the birth, he was placed for adoption. She eventually drops out of school, and finds herself living in the woods, near to her grandparents' home, after her grandfather throws her out on the streets. She then turns to prostitution to support herself. Early criminal activity. Aileen was a wild chick that's for sure. From a young age, she seems to always find herself in some sort of trouble. Like in 1974, when Aileen was only 18 years old, she found herself very much arrested for disorderly conduct. She was seen driving around, while under the influence, firing a gun from out of the window. Yep, that would definitely get one arrested. Then, a few years later, in 1976, while hitchhiking her way to Florida, she meets a gentleman by the name of Louis Gratz Fell, who was the president of a yacht club. He was much older than Aileen. At 69, he was no longer a spring chicken. He immediately felt an attraction towards Aileen, and I believe it's safe to say, that Aileen felt the same attraction, to his money. And they were married shortly afterwards. With Aileen's luck changing for the better, 
Marrying a rich, older guy, one would think that she would finally get her act together. But no, that unfortunately wasn't the case. She was still seen frequently, hanging out at the local pubs, and at times, finding herself in trouble, where she would spend time behind bars. She even went as far as to beat her elderly husband with his cane, only a few weeks into their marriage, forcing old Lewis to file a restraining order against her. And that was the start to the end of her marriage. Later that year, she heads back to Michigan, where she was again arrested for disorderly conduct, by throwing a cue ball at a bartender. But days later, unfortunately for Aileen, her older brother, Keith, dies from cancer. He had a life insurance policy that paid out $10,000. With her newfound wealth, Aileen was once again given another chance to turn her life around. But unfortunately, that wouldn't be the case. The money was spent in just a few months. Splurging on luxury items, spoiling herself, giving her the life she wanted. Even using some of the money to buy a new car, which she wrecked not long afterwards. Then, Eileen's life begins spiraling down. In 1978, depression pushes Eileen to the point of taking her own life. She takes a loaded gun, points it to her stomach, and pulls the trigger. But fortunately, she survives the attempt. This was not Eileen's first attempt at suicide. She attempts taking her life at least six times. Her earliest account was when she was only 14 years old. She was arrested a few more times, and served time for armed robbery, for passing fraudulent checks, and even trying to rob a man by gunpoint of $200. She was also considered a suspect for the theft of a firearm and ammunition. Then, 30-year-old Aileen meets 24-year-old Tyria Moore at a bar, in Daytona Beach. They fall for each other, hard. With them moving in together shortly after. Aileen later confesses at her trial. Saying, it was love beyond imaginable. Earthly words cannot describe how I felt about Tyria. And it was apparent that Aileen was being honest when she said those words. Because right up to the date of her execution, Aileen claimed to still be in love with Tyria. Murders. Eileen's serious crimes spread over a period of a year. And during that 12 month period, she took the lives of seven clients. Starting with 51 year old Richard Charles Mallory. On 13 December 1989, he was found in a wooded area with multiple gunshot wounds. According to Aileen, while she was servicing him, he became violent. Beating, raping, then sodomizing her. Aileen admits to killing Richard, but in self-defense. Investigations later proved that Richard had been previously convicted for attempted rape in the past. Then there was 47-year-old David Andrew Spears. He was reported missing on 19 May 1990. Then on 1 June 1990, along U.S. Route 19, in Citrus County, his naked body was discovered. He was shot multiple times. Her next victim was 40-year-old Charles Edmund Karskadden. His remains was found on 6 June 1990, in Pasco County. He was shot multiple times. His murder was soon linked to Aileen, because she was seen driving his car, and pawning his gun. Not smart Aileen. Not smart. Moving to her next victim, a 65-year-old Peter Abraham Seams. On 4 July 1990, his car was found in Orange Springs, with a palm print, later matched to Aileen, was found on the inside door handle. His body, was never found. Moving on to her next victim, 50-year-old Troy Eugene Burris. On 4 August 1990, in Marion County, Along State Road 19, his remains was found in a wooded area. He was shot to death. Then there was 56-year-old Charles Richard Humphrey. On 12 September 1990, 
His remains was found in Marion County. He was shot multiple times. And her final victim was 62-year-old Walter Geno Antonio. On the 19th of November 1990, in Dixie County, near a remote road, his half-naked body was found. He was shot four times. So on the 4th of July 1990, Aileen Interia was cruising around in one of the victim's cars. They unfortunately find themselves involved in an accident, and they are seen abandoning the vehicle. A witness gives the police a description of the suspects. Also, items from the victims was located at a pawn shop. And on one of the tickets, police uncovered a fingerprint, which was later matched to Aileen. Aileen was finally arrested at the Last Resort Bar in Volusia County, on 9 January 1991 with Tyria's arrest, the next day in Pennsylvania. In exchange for immunity for any of the crimes, Tyria agreed to help the police elicit a confession out of Aileen. So in a Florida motel, with the police never leaving her side, Tyria makes numerous calls to Aileen, pleading with her to come clean, and to help clear her name. Then finally, on 16 January 1991, Aileen comes clean, and confesses, claiming that it was self-defense. Aileen was in court for the murder of Richard Mallory on 14 January 1992. She was convicted, with the help of Tyria's testimony of his murder on 27 January 1992. Even after the defense psychiatrists testified that Aileen was mentally unstable, the courts felt it necessary to sentence her to death. This was even after the defense proved that Richard Mallory was previously convicted of attempted rape, and served time behind bars at a maximum correctional facility. Quote, it was observed of Mr. Mallory that he possessed strong sociopathic trends. End quote. But the judge deemed the evidence inadmissible, and denied a request for a retrial. On 31 March 1992, Aileen pleads no contest to the murders of Charles Humphreys, Troy Burris, and David Spears, explaining, that she wanted to get right with God. Quote, I wanted to confess to you that Richard Mallory did violently rape me as I've told you, but these others did not. They only began to start to. End quote. Own serial killer pleaded no contest to killing Dick Humphreys and Troy Burris in Marion County, David Spears in Citrus County. Legally, the no contest plea is viewed as a guilty plea, and because there is no plea agreement, Wernot still faces the death penalty in each case, an unusual legal prospect that Judge Thomas Swaya was obviously aware of, as he carefully questioned Wernos about her decision. I have made peace with my Lord, and I have asked forgiveness. I am sorry that my acts of self-defense ended up in court like this but I take full responsibility for my actions. It was them or me. I am sorry for all the pain that my actions have caused. I am prepared to die if you say it is necessary. On the 15th of May 1992, the courts hands Aileen an additional three more death sentences. I sentence you in case number 91-463 to death for the murder of Troy Burris. Case number 91-304 I sentence you to death for the murder of Charles Humphreys. Case number 91-112, Citrus County case number. I sentence you to death for the murder of David Spears. Thank you. And uh, probably see, uh, I'll be up in heaven while y'all rotten in hell. Aileen was definitely not happy with the verdict. Instead, she was hoping for a leaner sentence. Okay, there will be an automatic appeal. You have the right to an appeal. Mr. Glazer, is that going to be handled by you? Yeah, or the your wife and kids uh, get raped. I would ask that uh, you would appoint right the public defender's ass. office. Okay, I will I'll appoint the public defender's office uh, to handle the appeal. There's one other thing that I want to say that I think needs to be said. I know uh, I was raped, but you weren't nothing but a bunch of scum. Therefore, these proceedings are now Putting concluded. somebody who was raped to death on the motherfucker. Later, in June 1992, Aileen pleads guilty for murdering Charles Carscadden, and was handed another death sentence in November 1992. Then in February 1993, 
she receives an additional death sentence after she pleads guilty for the murder of Walter Antonio. She was not charged for the murder of Peter Seams, as his remains was never discovered. She received six death sentences, in total. Aileen originally claimed that all these men raped her, but she later changed her story, claiming that robbery was her main reason, stating that their deaths was due to her wanting to leave no witnesses. Aileen was housed at the Broward Correctional Institution, and later moved to Florida State Prison, to be executed. She petitions Florida Supreme Court in 2001, explaining her intention to withdraw all her pending appeals, stating, quote, I killed those men, robbed them as cold as ice, and I'd do it again, too. There's no chance in keeping me alive or anything, because I'd kill again. I have hate crawling through my system. I am so sick of hearing this. She's crazy. I've been evaluated so many times. I'm competent, sane, and I'm trying to tell the truth. I'm one who seriously hates human life and would kill again. End quote. Her attorneys tried to argue that she wasn't mentally competent, but Aileen reassured the courts that she was. I heard, you know, that you just couldn't stand being on death row after 12 years. Nick, and that, this is the last time I'm going to say it. You have to kill Aileen Morris because she'll kill again. Aileen was executed by lethal injection on the 9th of October 2002. Her last meal was a simple cup of coffee. Last words. Quote, yes, I would just like to say I'm sailing with the rock, and I'll be back, like Independence Day, with Jesus. June 6th, like the movie. Big mother ship and all, I'll be back, I'll be back. End quote. She died at 9.47 a.m. and her body was later cremated. Her ashes were scattered beneath a tree in Michigan by Don Botkins, a childhood friend of hers.